Today's video is brought to you by yourplaymat.com where you can create custom play mats and card sleeves. And if you're someone like me that is terrible at custom design stuff, they have a bunch of pre-designs that are really beautiful, really amazing, and can help fit you. Use the link in the description below or use the code Jeff10YP at checkout for a 10% discount at yourplaymat.com and it also helps support the channel a ton. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic. And today we are playing a Pool of Vigorous Growth deck, two mana artifact that you can pay X, tap it, discard it, create a token that's a copy of a random creature card with mana value X. Activate this only as a sorcery. So this is Momir. If any of you guys have ever played Momir or heard of Momir, it's a really fun format that's been around for a while and it's, I don't know why it's taken me so long to play this card. This card is so fun and I'm really excited to try it out with Parallel Lives. Uh, uh, so three, four mana enchantment. It's basically a, uh, oh man, uh, anointed procession. If an effect would create one or more tokens under control, it creates twice that many tokens instead. So if we make a pull of vigorous growth and it creates a random token, I believe it'll create a random, like two copies of the same creature that it's chosen. I'm not sure if it'll create two random different copies. I, I believe it's two of the exact same creature, but that'll be fun too to see if it's either a great card or an awful card. At random, we'll get multiples of them with parallel lives. Uh, we also just have a lot of ramp in this deck to make sure that we can actually you know, ramp up to good things, ramp up to our whelming waves and our, our rivers rebukes to have some sort of answers to everything that's going on in our colors. I was actually playing a kind of like a foggy, foggy version of this one beforehand, and that, that was kind of interesting. But I just saw whelming wave and saw that there's it, it hits everything except krakens, and that made me think that I need to be playing Cura. I still haven't played a Cura deck yet, so Cura tides uh, the tides fury creates a kraken hatchling, so a good blocker to make sure that we can just kind of keep chumping over and over and over again. We can also untap our land to ramp with it if we need to or just prevent damage from a certain creature uh with a second plus one ability uh so you can untap target creature or land prevent all damage will be dealt uh that would be dealt to and dealt by that permanent until your next turn and so we give them a really good blocker but if it lets us keep hitting pull of vigorous growth over and over and over again we can kind of stop their biggest thing from happening or we can also make you know, sacrifice the Kraken to make two eight eight black uh, Krakens with parallel lives, something fun like that. Cura, uh, the other Cura here also ramping us up. I wanted to go for a little bit of theme here. If we ever hit something with four, that's a four drop, four power, or whatever, we get to draw cards off of it. And that's actually really, really nice. If we can have that on the battlefield, that means that we keep drawing cards for all the ones we're discarding with Pull of Vigorous Growth. Karn to help us find the other one from the sideboard to help us have all the other things that we need to here on the sideboard to make sure that we can actually play games of magic and historic. Graphics Cage, necessary. Sources spyglass necessary god pharaoh's statue shuts down a lot of decks lets us go a little bit longer with pull of vigorous growth and also just shutting down artifacts is really really important here too so that's basically the deck let's see if this deck can actually work out uh we're gonna try it. we're gonna try it out see how it does for us which we like and here we go all right up against adt and uh yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. We'll keep this hand. We have a, we have cures, uh, which is the other side of things I wanted to you know make happen. So we, we're making it happen. Grazer is valuable here, you know, so that's cool. And then cure ramps us up to the other cure or potentially rivers rebuke, or one tap land in the deck. I have it here just because we're playing uh, the into the north, and we can grab a Rainwood Falls for free. There it is. Um, Guaranteed land, or do I actually play out the Kiora? That's an interesting option. I think it's Kiora here. Let's go ahead and get the ramp going. Uh, pass the turn. Rivers of Beak is a pretty powerful card. I actually, I, I feel like it needs to be played more often. It's just, it's six mana. It's so expensive, but it is so good. Um... Oh man, how do I do this? If I hit a land with land or visionary, I can play into the north as well. I really want to draw this land here. Land in double into the north. Wow. Well, past the turn. All right. I, I went for the most greedy play possible, which I think in this format we kind of need to do. I could have gone for the cure instead, untapped another land. Uh, I just would have done as much as if we had gotten this. Triome out there. All right, so they are five color. Paradise Druid for the five color plays. Um, I'm debating if I need a Karn here. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. All right, Cura. 
get to untap two lands, start doing fun stuff. They might have a counter spell. Three mana held up right now. Um, all right, let's just untap stuff. All right, untap lands into the north. Start actually ramping now. All right, uh, now we have Karn to go look for Pool of Vigorous Growth and play it on the next turn, or River's Rebuke. Thirst for Meaning, draw some cards. I'm hoping we're not just, like, dead this turn. That would be bad. Uh, they might not be five color. All right, it, it feels like five color. It's five color. Or four color, at least. Five color. There it is. Sanctum of all... Oh, no. River's Rebuke is pretty sweet against uh, this, though. How long do we wait? All right. We get to have fun while they're having fun. Uh, so, yeah, River's Rebuke is powerful here. Um, I'm not sure if I should do it earlier or later though um so negative two I will not lose grab pool of vigorous growth um we'll conjure a crack in hand this is also something we can discard over and over again to the pool of vigorous growth which is nice um untap here uh, should i just go from a ramp right now or should i get up the pool right now they could have discard i don't know if they'll have removal I need ramp all right we, we came to play pool we're doing pool okay get it out there pass the turn I, so zero drops there is a uh, ornithopter but there's also a uh, snake there, there's a bunch of X spells just just X uh, that are technically zero cost as well which would not work as well for this all right so sake of calm waters I do, I, I probably should have bounced then just because they would have lost Paradise Druid, had to have had to wait an extra turn to actually get to where they have enough mana to cast Sanctum all again. Um, I just wanted them to cast more things and then us take advantage of it. But now they have all the colors. They need to find red or white here with this mountain. All right, so we need to go for River's Rebuke. Okay, um, tap, untap, flows with River's Rebuke, I mean, it's not bad, I will read you of your um, I think it's Meteor Golem or God Pharaoh Statue, I guess we're a little bit behind for the God Pharaoh Statue to go for it, Meteor Golem, Um, do I play anything else out here? Can't really go for into the north or anything else. Let's, um, just get out this crack in hatchling. Why not? <laughs> pass the turn. All right, pass the turn. We're going to get to actually starting doing pool stuff at some point. Really, really pool stuff. You know, the poolest of all the things I could do. All right, at least this Meteor Golem is pretty sweet. You know, hanging that over their head here. So Paradise Druid. Now they can't really play much of anything. Only three mana. They just lost an entire turn basically there. We get to start going for Vigorous growth edgesness. All right, so how much do I want this to be for? Uh, do I want to keep like ramping and doing other stuff? We might be able to draw a card and go for Into the North. So let's let's go X5. Let's go at just X5 this time. I think five, six, seven are the most powerful in general anyway. So let's just go for X5, get rid of an aggrazer. All right, maybe I should have gone for more. <laughs> uh, we can also untap the pool here if we want to. Oh no, does it untap? Sorry, uh, yeah, submit zero. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, I think what we really want to do, though, is create this Kraken and draw a card with Kiora. The other Kiora.
Okay, untap a breeding pool. Let's get moving. And into the north or hold up grow spiral. Um, I could hold up kind of like I have a counter spell. Um, huh, I don't know what to do, guys. We'll go for into the north. All right, play a land, pass the turn. No attacks. All right, I mean, we have a decent board here. Kiora is doing some sweet shenanigans. We can pull, we can uh, pull vigorously. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what else we have going on here for us. Shadow the sky. All right, board wipe, let us draw us a card. It's sweet. I'm down for it. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what, what number we should be going for with this. If we get up to nine, we're going for Zakama. It doesn't technically get cast. I wouldn't mind finding a parallel lives as well. That'd be cool. All right, play this out. Um, hold up the meteor golem for a while, I suppose. Um, yeah, I guess we go for the nine, right? Um, so, so yeah, that's seven, eight, and nine. Oh, this is probably the worst possible way to go about this, but especially because they're going to have like target removal. They're going to have Calyxes, things like that. We should just stay on cheaper stuff and go with whatever. But you know what? We came to have fun and go for the nines. <laughs> That's a tight dad at the Rex. <laughs> Another card. Um, yeah, tick up. Submit zero. We got an 11 and 11. I mean, that's is it. That's it's not a bad creature to hit. <laughs> We're gonna draw extra cards with all these big dudes too. I think everything in the nine level is gonna be able to draw a card with Kiora. Um, we could go for something like seven mana stuff can be really good. Sanctum of Calm Waters. Let them draw extra cards every turn. Try to find answers. They do play out the Honden as well. Okay. So I have Ratchet Bomb I can find with Karn, which can be a little bit annoying for them to deal with. Whelming Wave doesn't do a whole lot here, but it does block. Um, all right, in case I have something, what what uh, mana can I get something that's hasty? Let's say, so let's conjure the Kraken to hand. Let's, um, <laughs> let's uh, discard, let's go seven. Discard here. Beanstalk Giant. Okay, there's the Parallel Lives. Oh, oh so sweet. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, negative two here. We'll grab... Uh, yeah, Ratchet Bomb. Can't actually use this right now. We'll swing in for 11. They gain lots of life each turn because of Shrine. So that's, that is annoying. We'll have to Meteor Golem on this next turn, probably. Pass the turn. <laughs> Draws all of the cards. Yeah, we should have got rid of that right away. I just want big dudes, you know? It just sounds more fun. Witching Well, if they find a Shatter this guy, we're in trouble. They can play out Sanctum and Shatter on the same turn. I'm hoping that we can find a um, River's Rebuke again. We only have one more in the deck. Maybe we should be running three and three because we have all the ramp, but six mana is still a little bit slow, even with ramp on board wipes a lot of times for the other decks, other matchups we're in up against. But for these ones, River Subuke does affect it quite a bit. Potus gives it up. I mean, the writing's on the wall. We do, we we have kind of a hard lock on there. We have value in our Planeswalkers themselves. Like if you can't deal with Kiora, we do just make eight eights every once in a while. You know, like it's it's pretty good. <laughs> and then Kiora got, draws cards from those eight eights. Karn can help us just find other things. We got the Ratchet Bomb, making sure that everything that's a four drop dies at some point, which is a lot of our stuff too. Anyway, it's decent. It's not the worst. I like it. I'm going to keep it. All right. Well, we have Karn to get the Pool of Vigorous Growth. We have Whelming Wave. This is a keeper. We just need that fourth land. The fourth land has to be quick too. So it'll, it'll be there. It's fine. Everything's good. Uh, yeah.
And if we have it, then we get to ramp up to it pretty quickly, which is nice. Fortunately, we can't play as untapped for the grazer, but, you know, whatever. Mountain and gobos. Gobos are scary. We have the answer here with Whelming Wave. Like, that is the answer. I'm going to go ahead and play out the other grazer right now. We just need blockers against this deck anyway, in case things really go badly for us. Pass the turn, no attacks. Instigator. All right, so they have the turn three Cranko, potentially. We need to find a land. All right, well, there's another Grazer and no land for you. If we find a land, we have one tapped land, by the way, in this deck uh, at this point. Oh, no, wait. All the Botanical Sanctums are also tapped. Uh-oh. We could be in trouble. Five tapped lands. There's the Muxus. Bring it on, little Muxy. Whelming Wave in response to a Muxus that doesn't kill me is still pretty cool. We have Karn, Pull of Vigorous Growth, and Parallel Lives. We can start making a bunch of blockers, a bunch of things that are cool. Oh, man. Goblins are a hard one for us to beat in general. They do go for it. We have a lot of blockers, so it, there's still a decent chance we're not just completely dead. All right. They didn't find the most busted of things. Still good, but not the most busted. Finds another Muxus. All right. Come on, land. Thank goodness. Oh, that was going to be close. All right, so... Yeah, we can't wait a turn, can we? No, yeah, just bounce everything back. Force them to play everything out again. Pass the turn. So if we find a pool of vigorous growth... For the love. All right. Another Muxus with haste this time. Yeah, that's cool. Ah, ah. All right, well, we'll show them what we were doing and then they can laugh at us and we'll be done. All right, can see. Trats up against Prince Durbat and um, Yep, keep this. Typically, the cards I want, hands I want to keep is if it has a pool of vigorous growth, which we haven't found one of those yet, or hands that ramp quickly, or especially hands that ramp and have whelming waves and rivers rebukes in them. Like those are just cards that we need. Karn being in here, a way to find pool of vigorous growth. Like it's everything we want, except for one more ramp card. Ah, I was hoping. No attacks. Pass the turn. Red Boros shenanigans going on here. Oh, that's a tap land, unfortunately. Well, let's play out our Karn. And I, I actually like our chances already here. All right, so two. I could grab Ratchet Bob and just be destroying art like tokens here, but we already have that with Whelming Wave, right? So, yeah, just do the thing. No attacks. Pass the turn. So I'm, I'm feeling like token aggro here. Gonna chip some damage at the Karn. It is best if you stop. Oh. All right, so do I get out the pool or do I... I don't think we Whelming Wave yet. I think what we do is we play out Botanical Sanctum. I think we negative two here now. We're, we don't need the Karn after this point. I mean, it, it'd be nice. But Godfrey Statue going to be pretty good against a, a token deck that's just trying to like cast a bunch of cheap spells. Ratchet Bomb gets rid of everything one time if it's tokens. We don't actually know that, though. Um, Ratchet Bomb, I can play this turn with Pool of Vigorous Growth. Gro God for a statue the turn after. Oh, that's a tough choice. Let's go Ratchet Bomb. Pool of Vigorous Growth. 
Ratchet Bomb. And we just have answers for tokens for days, which is fun. I mean, we also have tokens, but, you know, whatever. Pass the turn. All right. Parallel lives. We want the parallel lives. It's the greatest thing that can happen. Pass. All right. They have a bunch of tokens. Feels like... I don't even know. They could have, like, indomitable creativity here. And be going for something different. All right. Transmogrify. Well... This does stop that. Wilming Wave can also deal with it, though. We can see what they're trying to get. Like, if it's a Sarah Ascendant or Sarah's Emissary, which is guaranteed. Uh, let's, let's make him do it multiple times, then. Why not? All right. Just magnify, fizzles. Um, that's six mana. I guess we don't need this land anymore, so we start discarding those. It is six mana, right? Okay, we're good. Riddle Master Sphinx. <laughs> Not quite there. All right, they didn't have the Dwarven Mine into other stuff. Forbidden Friendship. Um, yeah, just more six drops. Six drops are pretty swell. Drop this visionary. Let, dude, let me click on visionary. Goodness, that was ridiculous. It's hasty. Oh, oh boy. All right. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Uh, yeah, Rivers of Duke should be game. I don't know how they would beat that. Unless they, I don't know, they even protection. Wait, if they protect against sorceries, then with uh, Sarah's Emissary, then we wouldn't be able to target them. River's Rebuke does require us to target them. But we could also Whelming Wave and just bounce everything back to hand. Um, if that's worth it. I don't even know. But yeah, I, I do think that six drops every single time is still a good way to go. Whoa, Behemoths did not expect that. That's different. All right, I mean, that, that makes sense, actually. It's not the... It does make sense. We have lethal going back. We have a blocker. They don't have lethal. We're fine. And we go in for the win. All right, so we'll just show them that we have this as well for fun. Good game. And then we swing. Ha-ha! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> yep all right sweet that was that was a good matchup that was fun uh they yeah that's that's why we have ratchet bombs and whelming waves sweet stuff uh Mel melkavian um oh still haven't found this is game number five i'm not sure or six actually we still have not found a bullet vigorous growth in an opening hand and i haven't mulliganed yet and i don't think we mulliganed this one either we have the karn we have the ramp we have lots of ramp but having that third land in hand would make this an actual good hand. Into the north on the next turn to ramp up. We do have you know, plenty of ways to go for this. All right, into the north. Rhinewood Falls, pass the turn. Drats. Having the land there would have been real good. Really good. Are you guys... This feels like a counter spell, Yeah. So we're going to throw out Grow Spiral first. It can still hit us a land, technically. Into the north. It's trying to beat out some counter spells. Anticipates. Okay. That also might have been the last chance we had to get a Karn out. And Karn stops things. Tap land. Well, we're dodging sensor, we're dodging a lot of things, so let's try to go for the Karn. My hopes are not high. Just kidding! 
the highest they've ever been. Karn does shut down a lot of combos. I mean, it's it's good. We had the one mana up for the Graph Diggers. They probably had one mana spells. <laughs> we win. Nice. Up against Axotus. And uh, so I, I'm not sure if I'm keeping all of these games in the video. I'm, I'm probably going to just put the ones that I think are fun up here. But we're keeping this. Man, we keep keeping hands that are a little bit funky. We haven't had a pull of vigorous growth in eight games now in our opening hand, but we've kept every opening hand so far because they're not bad. Like they're, they're not bad hands. We have whelming waves, which is really good. It's it's a good forward wipe to an extent against a lot of the shenanigans that's going on in the format. Cure is good here. We have ramp into these things, which is still good. Let's see what else is going on here. see if they're going to play. All right. Elementals. I was wondering what was going on. Now we know. Oh, man. More kind of tapped lands eventually. Um, well, I'll play out. Yeah, play out the Sanctum. No attacks. Pass the turn. I mean, that was the last time that these guys were any of them would be untapped. Hangeland Harbor was a little bit tempting because it's more untapped later, but has a chance of not being Risen Reef. Doesn't matter. Oh, the tapped lands. Well, we get to play something. Uh, Wilmy Wave is nice against this matchup at times. One drop. Should I get a one drop? No. If it's a Grazer, it's awesome. Or Mana Dork. There's so few of those. Okay, auto pay. I was hoping for something like Death Touchy or whatever. That's not bad. Well, you know, you know, it's a chump blocker. Pass the turn. All right, Whelming Wave on the next turn. Get whatever things off this board as we can. Hopefully they miss out on land so they can't just rebuild like crazy here. Hopefully don't do it here. Six mana. Cavalcade of Calamity. That's fine. What? Okay, so this is all in the token generation uh, elementals here. All right. Yeah, okay, this is this is interesting. I actually like this. This is a different take on elementals. I kind of don't want to. I, I want to see this full game go on now. Didn't hit more lands. So that at least helps a little bit. Makes it harder to rebuild again. Parallel lives. Also intriguing. Uh, I guess attack in first, gain some life. Whelming wave. Uh, we'll hold on to a grazer or discard later, maybe. Um, I wouldn't mind playing parallel lives and then discarding this for a five drop or two, like two, two drops is actually pretty nice. So, yeah, we're still in OK shape with parallel lives. Now we actually could do really good stuff here. Potentially. Come on, land off the top. I like this build, though. I mean, the issue the issue with elementals is that they're so focused on on Risen Reef. Ah, flipping tap lands. Can't help but feel like we're not doing all that we could be. All right. That's a way to get more lands. Uh, I'm not sure if we get rid of Cura, though. I mean, two seven drops later. Uh, 
I mean, yeah, I guess maybe we get rid of the Cura for the land here. This is a tap land, unfortunately, but we have defenders now. Yeah, lots and lots of damage being dealt here. Jump you, block you. Would really have liked to have something that could actually kill there, but you know, whatever. So good. The other side of this, though, is like the... Be able to make Krakens and then sacrifice them to make two 8-8 Krakens here is also a pretty good thing to go for with Parallel Lives. A second Calamity. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't know if we'll, I don't know if Cure will be fast enough. What, what man of Kermanicos has more life link? I think there's more angels in the six drop slot than in the seven drop slot, and I think that's what's necessary here. So I I'm actually thinking we might just get rid of this land, hold on to Cura for later. Nah, we came to do it all. I could tap this down and not get let it do any damage to us, but wow, well, whatever. Return target spirit instant of sorcery card from graveyard to hand. We have some of those, I think. <gasps> we got whelming waves back. <laughs> Are we dead here? We're, we might be a little bit close. I'm not going to lie. It's not looking good for us. But the Whelming Wave is huge. Whoa, yeah, that's big. That's pretty cool, the Risen Reef. Like, you get to kind of dig through for the Cavalcades. They probably have bombardments too. I don't know. Very interesting. I don't, I don't think this is competitive, first off, but oh, this is looking really fun. Like, if you don't have Risen Reef, I think this deck is is too slow compared to everything else in the format. Um, with Risen Reef, however, super good. Um, I think everything's uncommon as well. So that's one thing. So budget wise, this is awesome. Uh, yeah, this is a budget deck. Some rare lands, but for the most part, budget deck. All right, so we're taking a ton of damage. We do get to kill Risen Reeves if they attack him with those, though. Hmm. <laughs> Are we just dead to the damage here first? I can't remember. I don't, I don't know how many triggers went on the stack. It's a lot. What is it? Is that 15? We're dead. Okay, yeah. Good game. <laughs> I didn't realize how many creatures they were attacking with. Oh, yeah, six. Yeah, six times three. 18. Yeah, they had they had lethal. Cool. All right, up against Cujo and Mulligan. I think our first Mulligan yet. Keep that one. Eh. I guess one of these guys. I, I want the guaranteed four mana where Gross Spiral doesn't technically do that for us. So play this like this. Right what falls in the opening hand is a little bit awkward because we actually don't get to play both botanical symptoms here on time. Up against goblins, so a deck where whelming waves are useful, maybe, if we're not dead immediately to them. And unfortunately, we don't get it on turn three because the tap botan botanic botanical sanctum here. <gasps> Ooh, interesting. Mm. Still requires a land off the top. Now, into the north first. Before us, fast turn. All right, so do they have the Muxus? 
They need to play a land first here. They're already looking at doing everything, Krinko. Oh, come on, untapped land. Yes! Oh, they spent so much on that. And now they're down to stick at just two lands. Rebuilding. Fantastic. All right, well. Okay, so we get to play Grazer. Sanctum. I could have gone for the Graft Digger's Cage there, but I think what we want is we want Karn and we want Sorcerer's Spyglass. Oh, we have another Whelming Wave, so I'm not as worried about stopping that yet. Ratchet Bomb can be good, but I, I think it is just Pool of Vigorous Growth is the best thing. Um, we play that out and Whelming Wave on the next turn, hopefully. Did they miss another land here? I didn't see what was on top, but that's that's not a land. Wow, they <laughs> they are really getting mana screwed here. Wily Gabo. We might just make a four drop for the fun of it. Uh, they they do have Wily Goblin. Alright. Um You will not threaten this. I can't go Godfair's statue. <laughs> Let's go hard lock. Why not? <laughs> no attacks. Pass the turn. All right, they can kill Karn if they want to. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, Karn just just beats things. Uh, I we didn't go for the pool that time. Pool's fun, but we shut down their treasure with Karn already. Making everything cost two more there is just like the ultimate. Yet yeah, sorry, yeah, you're gonna be too slow. Love it. They probably still had a chance against us, though. Goblins are way stronger, I think, than Pool of Vigorous Growth. But who knows? All right, up against the Jackal. And uh, keep this. We have a Pool of Vigorous Growth in the opening hand. Whelming Wave, Cart, like all of the things. This is the bestest hand there ever was. I don't know how early we start playing this, though, because I don't want to start discarding everything right away. I think we're going to have to answer their stuff with Whelming Wave. So we get this out on turn two, turn three. Um, depending on how to, what we're playing against, we need to either ramp up to a Whelming Wave or we can play it out and hold off for a turn. So, I've way overthought this. Play this out past the stinking turn. Well, pool. Go for it. Before it can get countered, pass the turn. <laughs> now we get to make things every turn, which is not a bad way to go. Shimmer of Possibilities. Uh, not a guaranteed ramp with Grow Spiral yet. There it is. All right, so we do get the land. Discard something this turn, play out Kiora or something else on the next turn. Karn is pretty nice for a lot of things. Do I discard here? I could just make a two drop. Yeah, let's just do that. So, all right, there we go. We, we get to ramp up like crazy. Ramping up like crazy is much better. Life's good. Pass the turn. Good stuff. All right, how bad do things get? They could have artifact destruction. That'd be bad. We're at five mana, so we can play Cura and play out the Kraken and just start going with that game plan here too. Or we just make more dudes. All right, let's play out Cura. I think Cura is good just because it makes Krakens and we can discard them to the pool. Um, you think you can win. So make a Kraken. Do I make a 2-2 or do I play out one Kraken so I can sacrifice it if need be? I think we play it out. There are even bigger things to come. All right. Setup achieved. Pass the turn. Letting them have more turns, though, it just feels wrong. I shouldn't be doing this. But I mean, that's kind of what we're doing anyway. Okay, Bedevils. Fine. Karn! Should have held on to you, I think. Just make six sixes or go find answers. 
Let's just make six sixes. Does Whelming Wave seem like it's going to be useful here? I don't think so. It does get rid of our stuff too, so not as useful. Sweet. A Torrential Gearhulk. How about that? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll play on an extra land. Why not? We'll get seven drops now. Thanks. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna play this every time before you activate pull the growth who knows what's gonna happen <laughs> oh man okay that's fun <laughs> all right uh so i i, dude, I don't know i six truck the six mana things have been doing really well for us so far tome of the guild pact huh Intriguing. Is this a Niv Mizzet deck or is it just Grixis dragons that have lots of multicolored things? Because they, they do have lots of multicolored things. Um, we're gonna make a Karn here. Stop the Tome of the Guild Pack from being able to tap down. Um Sorceress Spyglass. Graph diggers can be interesting. Tome of the Infinite's also interesting. Ah, we'll play Sorcerer Spyglass. Do the smart thing. All right. Well, Nicol Bolas. Dragon God. The other one could be bad, the Ravager, but yeah, this this does get rid of Karn. And we do technically have just, you know, damage right now. I did choose the right one, right? Dragon God. Dragon God. Okay, we're good. Life is life is good. Erebos' is intervention. Uh, they need one more land before they can kill Gearhulk, but they can just gain lots of life. Yeah, okay, we got him. We pulled him. We got the Torrential Gear Hulk for even extra value. Uh, we could have gone on for more, but I mean, like, then we just were set up in good spot there. I I like this deck. It actually is working really well. I've played more games than I typically do because it is just a blast to play. So let's dive in the wrap up. All right, so I'm definitely cutting some games here, but here's the, the list of games. And uh, Goblins game one, or no, I can't remember what I, I ran into. There's a bunch of, there's Land Destruction game one that I lost against here. Uh, this was another Sanctums one. And then this one, I don't remember. I think it was Goblins again or something. But uh, so three losses I just, that weren't fun. A couple losses I'll probably keep. But ultimately still though, we had five wins out of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten so 50 percent win rate in free play in historic so overall the deck is super fun i had a blast with this one it's it's a fun deck it really is uh I, let's see if mtg assistant is online now man wizards really made it diff their life difficult but this does have a lot of really cool things here uh you are typically able to kind of see the deck see the win rate oh they do have the win rate here okay so we have you just have to click into it now uh but yeah so this does check the win rate if you guys want to check out mtg assistant it is down in the description below it's always there it helps support the channel a ton if you guys do help so click this and it's totally free everything about it is free it's really cool and you get to see where you played which games you played you kind of see the deck list to kind of see okay wait what what was the one they were going for so which one did i kind of forget which one it was it was the third to the last i think it actually goes this way um and it was oh it was a colorless deck or anyway i don't know it doesn't matter yeah it was it was a colorless deck that i ran up against that's the one there you go so if you ever have those kind of things trying to remember what you guys are running up against there was a deck that was running colorless stuff they played out of karn when we had vigorous growth on the board and i was like oh we can't activate it game over because i didn't draw my third land yeah anyway so if you guys want to check that out you can do so um all right let's dive into this deck and what i changed with it i don't think anything like it was super fun it was super fun to play 
uh kiora behemoth reckoner i didn't really play very much visionary also i didn't really play very much i feel like the the amount of ramp we got from these ones was good enough uh that i feel like i actually wanted more lands potentially and maybe even one more river's rebuke and then potentially just like more interaction and answers in the early game um that's the issue with going into blue instead of going to white whatever we don't have actual board wipes but we do get to interact with non-land permanents a little bit more uh what, what's the uh brazen borrower could be a decent card just to have like something that's a finisher of some sort it's a card that you can play out you get the two two here i i don't know though like you don't really want to be discarding cards too much uh so pull of vigorous growth and that's where that actually could be good as well as you kind of get two cards out of it and discard other things you can discard things and play it as a creature if you need to uh it also does block things that are flying which is one issue that you do run into with this deck is you, there's sometimes just flyers and pull of vigorous growth like doesn't give you answers for those you don't have removal as often or whatever you don't want to have to use one wave if you have a great board this could be good because it does still block creatures with flying and so does grazer so like you have some answers for that so brazen bar might come in as a better three drop than some of these other things just to have some interaction more interaction it does counter uh some um combos because it just bounces stuff it ends on speed and that's a good play to do counter spells could also be good to kind of help control everything and so cura was good i think it deserves a one of in the in the in the deck because it does draw you cards when things enter the battlefield but i liked this one better actually which was really surprising i expected that to not work out as much for me but the Kraken, we've got to make a Kraken in one of the games. I, I'm not sure if I'm actually keeping that game. I don't I don't know which one it was in. But uh, we did make Krakens as one of them. I actually had a chance to potentially make uh, double Krakens with Parallel Lives on it, which is a win con for it. I don't know. It, it's a good deck. It's fun. There's a lot of fun things about this. I absolutely had a blast with it. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. And bye-bye.